Now let's consider the arterial supply to the splanchnic organs, the liver, spleen, stomach, and bowel. The celiac trunk, or axis, branches into the left gastric, common hepatic, and splenic arteries, the vessels which supply the liver and spleen, respectively. These organs require constant blood flow to meet their metabolic demands and therefore have low resistance to arterial inflow. The normal Doppler spectral waveforms from the celiac trunk, common hepatic and splenic arteries, exhibit constant forward flow throughout the diastolic component of the cardiac cycle in both the fasting and postprandial states. Like the waveform from the internal carotid artery, the spectra from these mesenteric arteries feature quasi-steady flow and a blunted systolic peak. The left gastric artery is not routinely visualized or included in the vascular evaluation of the mesenteric arteries. If these arteries are stenosed, the peak systolic and end diastolic velocities will increase in proportion to the severity of the stenosis. Several investigators have attempted to categorize the severity of mesenteric occlusive disease based on peak systolic velocity in these vessels and have indicated that a velocity greater than 200 centimeters per second suggests a diameter reduction of the celiac artery greater than 70 percent. Although such criteria are helpful in recognizing the potential for flow-reducing stenosis, we have found that the presence of post-stenotic turbulence distal to the focal high-velocity signals must be confirmed for identification of hemodynamically significant celiac artery disease. Post-stenotic signals are recognized by the disordered spectral flow patterns and bubbling sound of the audible Doppler signal. Unlike the celiac, hepatic, and splenic arteries, the superior mesenteric artery, or SMA, will have a high resistance type waveform in the fasting state. Remember, this vessel supplies blood to the mesenteric organs the intestine, stomach, and colon. The SMA waveform, like the waveform from the external carotid artery, will exhibit sharp upstroke in systole, rapid systolic deceleration, and low flow throughout the diastolic portion of the cardiac cycle. There may be flow reversal in late systole in this vessel, which supplies a high resistance end organ. Following a meal, the vascular demands of the digestive organs change from high resistance to low resistance, and blood flow increases to meet the metabolic demands imposed by digestion. Postprandially, we should notice an increase in the peak systolic velocity of the SMA, but the most notable response occurs in the diastolic component of the waveform. Diastolic velocity usually increases by more than 50% following a meal. Like the celiac artery and its branches, focal increases in peak systolic velocity followed by post-stenotic turbulence may indicate flow-reducing SMA stenosis. Velocities exceeding 275 centimeters per second are suggestive of greater than 70% diameter-reducing stenosis. The renal, arterial, and venous systems are the next major visceral circulatory systems to be considered. The kidneys, like the brain, liver, and spleen, demand constant blood flow to meet their metabolic demands. Therefore, the Doppler spectral waveforms from the normal renal artery demonstrate forward diastolic flow, similar to the waveforms from the celiac, hepatic, and splenic arteries. The angle corrected peak systolic renal artery velocity may be slightly higher than the peak systolic aortic velocity, but a ratio of these peak velocities will be less than 3.5 in the absence of flow reducing renal artery stenosis. These low resistance waveforms seen in the main renal arteries are also documented throughout the intersegmental arteries of the medulla and arcuate arteries of the cortex of the normal kidney. When stenosis narrows the renal arteries by more than 60% of their diameter, 
the velocity will increase in peak systole, becoming much higher than the peak systolic aortic velocity. In this setting, the peak systolic renal artery velocity divided by the peak systolic aortic velocity will result in a ratio of velocities greater than 3.5. The spectral waveforms from the normal renal vein demonstrate respiratory phasicity, characteristic of the peripheral veins, and color flow imaging will confirm the phasic nature of the venous flow pattern. In contrast, a non-phasic velocity signal will be noted in an obstructed vein. To summarize, if venous outflow from the renal system is obstructed, the diagnostic criteria used for peripheral venous obstruction apply. Continuous, non-phasic velocity signals, dilation of the veins, echogenic material within the vein lumen, and poor or no response to Valsalva maneuver. And finally, let's consider the flow patterns found in the normal and diseased abdominal aorta. Remember, the proximal aorta supplies mostly vessels with low resistance end organs, the celiac, common hepatic, splenic, and renal arteries. The superior mesenteric artery is the only high resistance vessel in the normal fasting patient. For this reason, the spectral pattern from the suprarenal aorta may demonstrate forward flow during diastole. Below the level of the renal arteries, the aorta supplies flow to the lumbar arteries and the arteries of the lower extremities. These vessels supply the high resistance muscular bed of the hips and legs. For this reason, the flow pattern in the normal distal aorta will mimic that of a peripheral artery. This waveform can be recognized by rapid upstroke in systole with a sharp systolic peak rapid deceleration to a reversed diastolic phase, and forward diastolic flow. In elderly patients, or patients with reduced vessel wall elasticity, the signal may be biphasic, lacking the forward surge in diastole. Atherosclerotic stenosis of the aortic wall may cause focal increases in the peak systolic velocity. It should be noted, however, that if the aorta is diseased due to severe atherosclerosis, aneurysm, or dissection, the peak systolic velocity may decrease. 